Well, 13 months into my Bearhawk build project and I finished the fuselage and made a start on the wings. The weather's warming up down here in New Zealand as we move into spring. I've had a busy month and I'll give you an overview of what I've been up to. Come and take a look. Right, so here it is with the fuselage painted, all the cows in place, doors in place, skylights in. Um, everything's, everything's on it. Well, here's a view looking underneath the uh, nose of the aircraft. The, uh, the front air intake there, that's all screwed in place. That went on last night permanently. I made up this, uh, the lip here out of fiberglass. That's screwed in place. One thing that you'll notice is I've used these dome head screws. Now, a lot of people don't like using them um, because of the, the additional drag from the air resistance. I just love the look of them. I, I think very utilitarian. Um, I've, I've got a lot of them on the nose of the aircraft. They're easy to use and uh, I really like them. So moving back down here, you can see the stainless uh, steel tunnel. Um, the exhaust pipes and under here is the, the little removable cover that I, I ended up fabricating and that's got uh, that's held in place by eight screws that gives me full access to the gascalator very very easily about 30 seconds I can have those screws out um, so I, I, I think in under 10 minutes I can um, from start to finish I can probably remove that cover remove the bottom bowl of the gascalator clean it out and put it back and and it'll all go back together just a little bit further back here there you can see the uh, the shock strut seals and um, I made a separate clip to show how I made those. It was a very busy month working on many areas of the aircraft, brakes, dashboard, setting up paint booth, all that kind of thing. I managed to get the struts assembled and then uh, once it was all painted started putting it all together and uh, got to see the final results. The windshield went in, did final assembly on some of the engine hoses and parts So these there. are some of the parts that I've sprayed over the last couple of days. Um, obviously one of the engine um, cowl doors this is the lower cowling and uh, down there is the top cowling and I'm very, very happy with the way those all came up. Um, it has made a huge difference getting a little bit of practice in and I'm, I, I haven't had a single paint run uh, this time around in the last week. So very, very happy with how that's um, turned out. Down here a few more parts, uh, another wing strut there and uh, the lower air intake and another cowl door. So this is a temporary paint booth that I set up in my garage so it's uh, just big enough to take up half the garage so the Bearhawk's sitting on the other side there, the main fuselage. I've made it out of uh, masking material drop sheets um, for, that you would normally use for masking off your house and they're pre-taped so it took me probably about two hours to set all this up. I've also got, uh, I've masked off the ceiling this time as well, and also the floor, um, although it's probably a little bit too late for the floor. Uh, one thing you can see here on the workbench is a small fan heater, and I've had that running most of the time. The problem here in New Zealand at the moment, um, what are we, sort of mid-August, is very cold temperatures, often down to zero, minus one overnight. Often I'll bring the parts in first and leave them sitting in here for a couple of hours, and that's probably bringing the, uh, the temperature of the aluminium itself up to, I'm guessing, 10, 12 degrees, something like that. The main point being is that it's not freezing. And doing it that way, I'm having quite good results. So tomorrow I'm gonna to actually um, take the whole makeshift uh, arrangement down, and I'm gonna get my garage back. So I've just finished installing the cam locks on the uh, engine cowl doors. They go in quite easily, a little bit fiddly to get the washers on. If I just flip that up the other way, you can see the washer sitting underneath. And another thing I've done is just added some silicon tape on the engine cowling. Um, it's just to help seal it when the door's closed and also provide some uh, chafing resistance. Right, so I've applied the silicon along the side of the uh, windshield here, put the, the fairing in place. I pushed it into place so that the silicon actually runs out around the side and then wiped it um, smooth around the edges with my finger and I've just put a couple of AN3 bolts loosely in place. That's just to hold it there while it cures. It should probably be cured in another couple of hours. Then I'll remove the bolts and I'll remove the masking tape and see how it's come out. We're uh, putting these baffle seals on the intake and it came up all right. It was actually a little bit harder than I thought, um, particularly trying to get them to lay flat. So um, probably took most of the day in the end. Um, one thing of interest, you can you can just see in here the, the lock wire that I've used. That's a blast tube that runs down into the alternator. You can see it there. And I've used the lock wire, actually tied it off on the casing of the alternator just to hold the blast tube in place. And I'm doing that with a few other blast tubes as well. So yeah, the seals went in all right. I've rivet, riveted them all around the edge. Um, the rivets are fairly small and uh, inconspicuous. There. Today I'm making up the boot cow seals around the shock strut um, on the gear leg. What I've done is I've actually just riveted it in place. And if, if I give you a view from the top down, I've, I've cut it so that I can actually slide the whole fairing off 
without removing the gear strut. This way I can just take the screws out. This, this rubber piece here is just held in place by two um, self-tapping screws that I've put through Tinnamons. And once I've removed those, I can slide the whole thing straight out. So very, very simple. Now there's a view from underneath the aircraft looking up and you can see it seals quite well. So this morning's job was to uh, make an alteration to the stainless steel tunnel that sits underneath the uh, exhaust outlets. And uh, incidentally on my aircraft, that's also right underneath where most of the uh, fuel system complexity sits for the fuel pumps there, the gas escalator, that kind of thing, and the fuel selector. So what I've done, you can see here, I've uh, made this cutout um, in, the, in the stainless steel tunnel. So this is where the aerial, uh, the VHF aerial sits. The exhaust pipes run alongside here. And this cutout will sit right underneath the gas escalator. And the reason is so that uh, I simply take out eight number six screws and I have full access to the gas escalator. The gas escalator's got, the, uh, got, got a mesh filter in it. And also it's probably a collection point for any crud in the system during uh, phase one testing. So I'd like to have far better access to it the actual tunnel off itself which was my original intention to have that easily removable turns out it's not so easy to remove there's a lot of screws and quite a number of panels around it um, so it was going to make it quite difficult to remove this just simplifies the whole exercise here's the view from underneath the aircraft with the uh, tunnel clico temporarily into position and there you can see the access hatch that i've made um, gives full access, actually quite easy. I wanted it large enough to be able to get my hand up in there to remove the gas escalator. So the gas escalator comes out by putting a wrench onto this, which is a separate threaded bolt. Take that out and then the, the, ga the whole gas escalator will simply pull down or, or twist off very easily. There's, uh, there you can see the uh, quick drain valve. And when I fashion this panel up, I'm gonna put a hole there so that I can uh, access that drain valve very easily. Problem I've got at the moment, we're in full lockdown here in New Zealand and I don't have any uh, stainless steel sheet to make that out of. So that's a job for another day. Uh, it's a bit of a late start today. It's um, 22 degrees Celsius outside. It was just a stunning day um, for the middle of winter. So I decided to take the road bike out and I headed up into the hills for you know, about two and a half hours or something like that and just amazing views. So anyway, here I am in the shed and it's nearly 4 p.m. Um, what I'm doing today is um, remaking one of these Kydex door pillars. Remaking is kind of the story of my life with this project, but it's a fairly short job actually. What happened is um, the, the door pillars worked out pretty well overall. And one of them worked out splendidly. This one I managed to overheat and it's got a little bit of rippling. Normally I wouldn't worry too much about that, but it's right in full view when you're climbing the aircraft. And I just, I just want to do it again and get it right. And um, so what I've done is I've, I've got my piece of Kydex and uh, I've just ruled the lines on where I'm gonna make the folds. I'm gonna bend it around a little piece of wood here. I'm just gonna clamp it to the bench, heat it up with the uh, with a heat gun, and just take it nice and slow, and uh, just bend it again, and then redraw the holes where the windscreen's gonna screw through it, and uh, hopefully should be done in about 30 minutes. This is the new Kydex cover for the door pillar on the left side that I made up uh, yesterday. So much improved, no deformation from overheating it too much, thankfully. And uh, I just made it slightly larger so that it can cover the fuel line and the electrical wires quite easily now. So it went on far easier and it only took about probably 20, 30 minutes to do. Well, I've just spent the last couple of hours uh, fitting the windshield permanently. So it's gone in for the final time. I had made all the parts up previously and then uh, taken it all apart to paint them. So it's been fitted numerous times. And then uh, this evening I decided to uh, do it for the final time. Well, I've let that silicon cure overnight, so um, let's take a look at it and see how it's coming up. Actually, that's turned out really well. I've got um, beautiful crisp lines all the way around there and a good seal as well, so very, very happy with that. So I spent a whole day working on the doors. So, uh, they were working reasonably well, but they required quite a lot of force to uh, close the locking mechanism on them. If I operate it from the inside, it works well and it hits both of the stops. However, if I operate it from the outside, it doesn't do that. Basically, it doesn't hit the stops, and that's a problem. Be because the stops aren't there, the mechanisms come out of the, uh, of the channel, and then I have to uh, pu pull them apart, fit them back in again. Down here, you can see the uh, inside mechanism. I've taken the Kydex panel off, and this is what's inside it. These are the bars that are used to uh, 
to keep it closed. So what I'm doing is actually widening out. I'm, I'm loosening everything up to give it a little bit of play, which is counterintuitive to me. So these handles are the Henrix manufacturing door handles, very, very well machined and uh, high quality, but it was binding a little bit, so I've disassembled it here. When you do take it apart, you can see the ball bearing there and you have to be quite careful that it doesn't, uh, it's spring loaded, so it tends to jump out. Just place your finger over that part there as you slide it off and it'll keep the ball bearing in place. Inside you can see the grooves that locate the ball bearing in the different positions open and closed. I've, I've lubricated it up, made sure it's all working well and then put it back together again. I have drilled and put a split pin in the uh, mechanism there, in the bar. So that's working really well. So now, if you want to close them, it's a one-handed operation, just like that, closed. You want to open them, same again. You can open them very, very easily. Inside or outside, doesn't make any difference. They don't catch, they don't bind, and the mechanism works perfectly. Pretty happy with that. Well, here's a view of the skylight on the, on the aircraft. Um, finally fitted. And uh, I wanted to give you a look at these um, side fairings that I've had made up. So what I've done is um, I've got a local engineering workshop to make them up because they, they needed to use a shrinker, uh, which I don't have. And they're made out of two pieces of uh, aluminium, which I've then riveted together. There's one on each side. So you can see that the skylight is actually captured um, here at the back, the front, and both the right and left sides. Now. If I bring the camera down here a wee bit, these Clicos obviously will eventually be replaced with machine screws. So that's removable. And even, uh, I haven't siliconed it just yet. It's got felt at the front and back edges. It's captured with um, uh, strips of foam on the sides and also in the centre uh, where the machine screws go through. And by undoing these screws here, I can remove the whole skylight. I will add some silicon um, just around the outside edges just to prevent any uh, water from getting in it. But other than that, it looks to be fairly solid. So wing moving day was a pivotal point in the project. I've been looking forward to a change of direction for quite a few months now. Fortunately, I had uh, help from Sarah, my wife, and Joel, and uh, made the job a whole lot easier. I got the wing crate installed and turned it into a workbench. I'm making up nut plates today and there's a lot of them so all of these little inspection ports on the wings have got cover plates over them and uh, each one of them has a flange that will go inside and be riveted um, back up underneath and that's all got to be dimpled. Th these are actually pre-made but none of the holes are drilled so that's fine. All, you know the, the hard work with actually cutting it out and everything is already done and they come with two holes pre-drilled just to locate them. So you, Quite a quite a lot of work just um, setting up your own little um, sort of factory, just processing each one. It's it's just laborious. There's nothing hard about it, and you've just got to do it with a reasonable degree of accuracy. So this morning I've been putting the nut plates on the back. I've got the little nut plate um, jig, which makes drilling the holes so much easier. And I'm just working through. I've just got a hand squeezer, so it's giving me a bit of a workout. But it's all going quite well so far. I've got one one left to do here. And I'm not going to rivet them in place just yet because at, at the moment I, I need to uh, be able to lift this bottom skin up to get inside and uh, install the bell cranks and that kind of thing. Um, so when you lift it up, it gets a curve in it. And I think if I go and go ahead and rivet these uh, flanges in place, um, it'll cause it to crease when I lift it up. So I'll, I'll leave that till later. Got to get one of these tools, they're absolutely brilliant. Huge time saver. And uh, all I'm doing is drilling the nut plate holes and it uh, it allows you to match drill them very precisely and very quickly without any... So the last couple of days I've been working on the wings. You can see here are the aileron pulleys with the pulley guards. I'm just waiting for some hardware to come in and I can bolt those into place. So I've been along um, and installed bearings on all of the flap and aileron hinges. At this end, you can see the aileron mounting bar. So the bell crank goes at this end, pulley and uh, cable guide at the other end. And over here, I've got the bell crank sitting here uh, with the um, aileron activation arm. Started working on the fuel tank. 
is out of the right wing. We've got the AN fitting sitting here. They screw into the uh, finger strainers with an MPT thread. So I'm going to remove those later on today and apply a Loctite 569 thread sealant and put them back in underneath. And this will be on the lower portion on the inside rear um, corner of the fuel tank is the fuel drain. Once again, that just needs to be uh, thread sealed and put back into place. So once again, there's another one month's progress on the Bearhawk aircraft at the end of 13 months. Now, at the end of the last video, I, I had mentioned that I'd hoped to have the aircraft into the hangar at this stage, the fuselage into the hangar. But what's happened, of course, is being in lockdown, the, the building of the hangar has come to a complete uh, standstill and it hasn't been done. We're hoping to have that done in another month, pending no more lockdowns, at which point we'll truck the fuselage down to, to the hangar. Now with the wings, there is a lot less complexity than building the fuselage involved, but there is two wings. I'm learning pretty much on the first one and taking care as I go. The second one I think will progress even faster, but the total time building the wings, I think probably one to two months. Not really too sure and there's no hurry to do it. Uh, once they're finished, once again, I'll establish a temporary paint booth in here and, and uh, go ahead and paint them. Then they'll be trucked down to the, the, the hangar once that's finished and the whole aircraft will be assembled. Thanks very much for, for watching. I'll do another update in one month's time. Thank you.